time now for instant wisdom. Steven Pinker is a professor of psychology at Harvard. He describes himself as being on the political left, but recently he's been criticized for daring to think and question the extremist views that are becoming far more prominent. Pinker has been named one of the world's most influential intellectuals by a lot of sources, actually, a lot of magazines. He's won too many awards to name. But in this clip, he's been asked about the extremism of political correctness. He responds by saying originally political correctness had an important role to play and was needed. But as those goals are accomplished, the movement didn't stop there. Instead, it morphs into a decadent phase that looks for increasingly smaller grievances. Here's Steven Pinker. But often movements kind of reach their their, their decadent phase, where they, uh, one, having achieved the low the the majority of their goals, having picked the low hanging fruit, they don't um, go out of business. But they need to find increasingly uh, uh, obscure grievances and causes to retain their their moral franchise. And I suspect that's what happened to what we now call political correctness, many, uh, many aspects of which, in their original moderate form, were completely reasonable. Um, I talk about this a little bit in The Better Angels of Our Nature in talking about the um, various rights revolutions that began with the civil rights revolution in the late 50s. The time after time you see uh, what starts out as an understandable and defensible and desirable moral movement uh, just go completely overboard, having achieved its major goals. So another example, which doesn't involve political correctness, but involves uh, another kind of madness, is our treatment of children. So children, you know, you, those of us who've read Oliver Twist and, and uh, so on know how children used to be treated in the, in the 19th century. They were, you know, they, they were in, uh, in, put to work as coal miners and chimney sweeps and, and starved in orphanages and so on. Then there was the, a kind of a children's rights revolution where children were treated, in the words of uh, one economist, as um, economically worthless, emotionally priceless. So that's our new understanding of child of children, as opposed to economic resources to be, you know, exploited, uh, and that led to a lot of great reforms: child labor laws, compulsory education, and child welfare agencies. Uh, it led to a reduction of corporal punishment of children, of uh, spanking. Uh, led to a, um, a, a greater attention to children's safety, like car seats, uh, and um, not exposing kids to secondhand smoke and you know playground uh, equipment that led to fractured skulls. But now we've gotten to the point, you know, as any any parent knows, in fact, as any grown-up child knows, where parents won't let children out of their sight, where kids can't walk to school, where they can't play by themselves in the playground out of fear that they might fall or get insulted or get abducted by sex perverts, all of it in totally out of proportion to any assessment of the objective risks. But the hyper-parenting movement is an example of a progressive trend that just went too far. That's Harvard's Steven Pinker.